Welcome everybody to the American Space Museum. I'm Mark Marquette and we're so glad you're with us to stay curious. It's Friday and we normally have Tales from the White Room and we do have Triple T with us here. We were going to have a more of a forum with a European Space Agency uh, space worker who's a Capcom and he had some come up at the last minute. But uh, we're glad that you're with us here to stay curious with two great friends here as Marty Winkle, my cameraman and producer there pans out. There's the handsome <laughs> Travis Thompson. And on his left is Mark Usiak, fresh from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Welcome, Mark and Triple T. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We were going to do a little bit of a form where you weren't even going to see much of my face. And Marty says chance of that on my own show. <laughs> but... Uh, but uh, we're still going to do kind of a forum here with we've got two gentlemen here whose lives have crossed paths at Cape Kennedy Space Center, yeah. <laughs> and they didn't even know it. Mm -mm. Of course, Triple T was the closeout crew for uh, almost uh, well over 20 years of your career, putting astronauts in their spaceship. Yeah. And Mark Usiak photographed them with his brother, Tom. Hey, Tom, how yeah. you doing? Uh, we got a good, uh, we're in shirt sleeves and shorts here today, aren't we, Brother Mark? <laughs> you betcha. Uh, you betcha on there. So we're going to talk about these two gentlemen being at the STS-2 was launched 40 years ago today in space history on this date with Joe Engel as a commander and Rich, uh, Richard Truly yeah. as the pilot. It was Richard Truly's 44th birthday. So happy 84th birthday to you, Admiral Truly. And uh, 88 years old, I think, is Joe Engel, the wow. only man to fly two space planes, because he was an X-15 pilot. On right. that. And uh, he was going to be on Apollo 17 and walk on the moon, and uh, they bumped him for Harrison Schmidt, a geologist. And right. Deke Slayton said, uh, uh, "Truly, uh, Engel, you can be on either Skylab or ASTP. And he said, I want to be on neither. I'm, I want to fly a real plane. And he waited for the shuttle. <laughs> and today was the day when that happened for Joe Truly. Yeah, uh, Triple T, we know why you're here. And we're going to hear <laughs> contrasting stories from these gentlemen of 40 years ago with STS-20, the first reusable spaceship. And then 30 years later when they both witnessed the end of the era yeah. and how things changed. Mark uh, Usiak, uh, quickly tell us why you're here from Lancaster Pennsylvania the last couple days. Well, I came down for a Astronaut Scholarship Foundation event that was going on for the Hall of Fame over at the Visitor Center. Um, I came down on Monday, uh, met up with my friend Carlton Bailey and Coco, uh, gracious enough to, to put me up for a few days. And then uh, there was some, uh, actually it was kind of crazy. I originally the, there was no launch schedule for this week. Mm -hmm. And when I booked in my vacation, there wasn't going to be anything. All of a sudden, they shifted the launch dates, and now I've got two launches in there. Yeah. yeah. So it's like and a beautiful launch at that. It was sent crew uh, three up yep. to the space station. They're up there fine. That Hall of Fame induction for the astronauts is Saturday. Correct. And you and your brother Tom are professional freelancers that have covered the space scene here. Correct. How fun is it to do those type of things? But, I mean, I can remember as a little kid watching the TV, you know, the Gemini guys going up and, and all that kind of stuff. And we kind of married the interest of photography and with space stuff. And boom, we get old enough to get press passes and mm -hmm. do all the fun things that we love to do. And That's been doing cool. it ever since, well, this year. July of this past, this past July was my 50th anniversary of the first time I was ever here. Wow. Came down with my brother and my dad. Your brother was pushing you in the crib. <laughs> yeah. was older than you, right? I'll tell you what, he is. He's, <laughs> he's got six years on me, but um, my dad and I were uh, in the press dependent site at that time, uh -huh. which is where the Saturn V building in that area it was just an empty field. They had bleachers for all the people that had press passes. They were allowed two dependents, so you could bring your wife, your daughter, your kids. So my brother was accredited at the press site for our local uh, college, and my dad and I were over watching the same thing he was watching at in the press site, but we were just standing there with a bunch of other people, and I was that was my first shot, Apollo 15. No. Got to know Al Warden, God rest his soul. Right. Um, Uncle Al. Yep. Mm -hmm. And um, press pass. Apollo 16 the following year, and it's been wonderful ever since. And, and I, so you can be a space 
work at the Cape and live in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, about 16 hours away, you, you mm -hmm. told me, yep. on there. But you and your brother uh, found the freelance work for what publications? It was scattered at that time. When my brother got his first press pass and my first press pass was for uh, the college he was attending. Mm -hmm. And outside of Lancaster, it's called Millersville State College. And um, what's their mascot? It's a marauder. A marauder, yeah, okay. Called Miller's All yeah. right. Yeah, we I had like the, that. He had the, the rough and tough, and he had a little hat on with a, I think it was an eye patch and everything All right. else. So, um, but my brother was accredited through the college, and then for Apollo 16, we both were accredited uh, same way. And then over the years, different publications had popped up. Um, it was it was great. I mean, we we grabbed every chance we could to to whoever we could use. We got a question before Jessica gives me that. Mark and Tom were both on a previous Stay Curious program back in May. Yes, we were back, uh, back in the there when uh, Marty and I were doing it old school wise. So, uh, uh, how do you think of and you and your brother watch us? And uh, I know you're pleased with how Jessica's helped us take us to the next level. So. It's beautiful. You guys have up the game here for mm -hmm. sure i mean Thanks. it's it's, we're it's bringing great. That a game. but we're not doing any images today except a couple that he of, of his work uh, just sort of a little different i did have a different spin on it jessica what is the question well the question i've got some some regulars dave stang christopher mick saying hello hey christopher Our, mick yeah get your and, winter coat uh, out buddy it makes me think you said that your first launch mark yes was apollo 15 where does that put you were you involved in that one? No, no. I was. I didn't start till the shuttle. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and we're, uh, good question there. I don't want to leave Triple T yeah, out here because T out we're gonna today. we're gonna combine them together. But first, I did want to apologize, uh, 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 Alex, uh, 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 who was going to be on here. Um, what's Alex's last name? Carl. Alex Carl, German. From the European Space Agency, Capcom. Uh, I gave Capcom. He actually talks to the astronauts that are on the space station, and was here for the Mauer astronaut of, of Europe that went up for the launch. Great guy. And at the last minute, he's got to go to Toronto on a nine o'clock flight, but he needed a different COVID test that only is administered for Canada at the International Airport of Orlando. And he was so looking forward to sharing some stories with y'all. Cool. But uh, because he's a Capcom and does the medical checks with the astronauts uh, from European Space Agency and American astronauts, if they're working on the European uh, lab experiments, all right? all right? But I had to ask him, and I'll share, I had mm -hmm. to ask him, what about that beautiful Russian actress and the, and the director that were up there? What did you hear about that? Yeah. He and he said, all, he did hear about it, that they were restricted to the Russian segment of the space station. Only one time were they allowed in the cupola for, of course, of, of, of filming it for the movie they were doing. She's up there doing some surgery, emergency surgery on an, an asteroid right. is the premise of that. And uh, that they all ate a meal one time together. But there's 11, uh, 11 of them up there. Uh, at the same time, including the, uh, the, the these two. So uh, they were very restricted to where they could go. I'll get the phone there. Don't worry about that. Uh, very restricted there. And um, uh, uh, anyway, it was it was kind of, we were looking forward to him sharing more about that. But I did want to share that with you, y'all out there in there. Now, I've got one more question. One more question. It's a Marty question. I have a question. Yes, sir. And maybe you don't know the answer. Our Capcoms are all astronauts. Right. Is he an astronaut for the ESA? No. No, he wasn't, right? All Capcoms are yeah. astronauts. Plus, Marty posed the question. He just thought there was one Capcom. But does Japan have their own Capcom to talk to their people? I believe and, it all and started. ESA when we, and Russia have their own Capcom? I believe so. that's when all this started, when we started flying other international okay. yeah international that's the word i was looking for yeah <laughs> my research on him i think he's eurocom he's, yeah he's, yeah they call it eurocom yeah. yeah exactly eurocom in there so but jessica he said he'll be willing to do a remote with us and when he's in toronto which is the same time difference or from cologne germany which is 10 o'clock his time when we're or four so uh we oh, want to reach out and test this more in fact this is kind of a test of us going uh, to a location instead of with the green screen and all that. So let's talk to you, buddy, here. Uh, Enough of me uh, 
40 years ago, 1981, yeah. you were wet behind the ears working. Uh, yeah. Uh, your mom was in human res resources. Your dad Pretty was working buddy. out there. Yeah. Uh, and this is the second time that we were sending the bird to orbit. Yeah. Tell us a little about what you remember about it. It was all exciting. I remember just, just the, but, you know, every day is work day. So, you know, you're, you're, you can't get caught up in the moment. You mm -hmm. got to be aware of what you're doing. So I just remember uh, I was young and I was uh, new as far as I wasn't on the closeout team yet. I was mm -hmm. training for it. So, uh, but STS2, we just stood in the field and, and it was, you know, it was all these workers. There was probably 8,000 of us out in this field, you know, and it was kind of like 8,000. Holy there cow. Was, there's only so many people that have something to do on launch day. Right. Yeah. So nobody, you know, and it was almost like Woodstock. Marty. Marty yeah. was at STS2. It was yeah. almost like Woodstock. It was out in really? where the OPF3 is now. That was all just a big field. Uh huh. And, they were playing softball and frisbee and everybody oh, wow. everybody put their car radios to the local rock station diz uh -huh. and we everybody was rocking out and uh yeah, well was, i i didn't look up what time of day it was i can consult the scroll jessica i think it was let's uh that's the, scroll? the scroll oh it doesn't give me the time it was so a morning launch i think it, it was a morning launch i believe but uh of course, that was uh, Joe Engel, we said, and Richard Truly, who yeah. today is Richard Truly's 84th birthday. So he had him. a big candle lit for his yeah. 44th birthday. Can you imagine that, going to space <laughs> on your 44th <laughs> birthday cool. on a spaceship that you're the first ones to try to do this twice Again. through this ship. <laughs> yeah. in there. Yeah. Gee, lucky me. Uh, and of course, us, uh, you uh, shuttle aficionados out there, What? let's have uh, the photographer tell us what is different about this launch in STS-1 that you won't see on any of the other 133 launches? Well, the STS-2 was the last time that they painted the external tank. Yeah. And they saved themselves about 600 pounds worth of weight, I believe. Yeah. And uh, my brother, well, we were both down to photograph that flight. Mm -hmm. And I was in the press site, and my brother was down at a site south of the pad called the Fire Tower. Oh, yeah. And he got some really neat angle shots looking straight up, you know, pretty much straight up the, mm -hmm. he had the wings this way, yeah. whereas I had Now, what about way. the fire tower, Travis? As I just remember that was a place where they'd go and drive the M113 and play. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but that was... Uh, but yeah, white tank, yep. only STS-1 and 2 have the two. white tank. Uh, that's a good uh, Jeopardy question, I think, you yeah. know. Uh, of course, no one would get it. Uh, 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 but, uh, a trivia at the bar. Right? I've also a trivia heard, at the bar. That's I've right. Your good heard. bar trivia there. By the way, you mentioned your friend uh, uh, Carlton is here in with us here. Bales, good to see you, Carlton. We're going to have him do a separate Stay Curious program uh, with his excellent photography. And uh, also, Carlton, we're swapping stories about him being a, a printer at the, uh, was it Walgreens or CVS? on Cocoa Beach and doing all the astronauts uh, uh family's pictures and stuff cool. like that so uh, <laughs> uh we'll get you on there Carlton appreciate you being here and, and uh, enjoying our museum uh STS2 also had ejection seats yeah i was going to mention that uh, uh and what anything about that you remember i remember these long pins about like that just straight pins and you had to have these pins installed to safe it while you're working around it so uh -huh. it doesn't go off while you're there all right It'd be a bad day were they what were they styled after you know uh F they were ejection 10. seats out of uh i don't remember which aircraft and remember what john young the first with uh crippen said about those ejection seats uh -uh. what did he i don't remember uh, he felt that they just see his brain splattered on top of the roof of the yeah. thing there yeah or He'd be burnt to a crisp like a marshmallow by the SRBs when they flew by you when you were going out yeah. there. I mean, I'm, I'm making fun of something that's very serious. The very, yeah. system but they did have the eject yeah. system for the first four uh -huh. missions. And uh, I just remember taking that last pin out as you're, you know, the seat's ready to blast off when you total that last pin. So like I want to, I want to get out of the ship like that last pin, but it's time to leave. Wow. <laughs> 
And while well, it was on the pad, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we had to save them as soon as it landed. Well, of course. So yeah. we didn't go in and open and get the astronauts out. We got straight to the seats and saved them. That's so. why we've got Tales from the White Room with Triple T. Yeah. There's some very <laughs> cool minutia about uh, these. Are, of course, used through STS-3 and 4, right. only two astronauts. And then they put four up in STS-5, and we celebrated that launch yesterday the, yeah. with some pictures that your brother took. Yep. Uh, did he happened? bring you down for that one? What kind of uh, opening did they have on the it was what kind of opening not, not above like, the cockpit Py pyrotechnics was going to blow the first the overhead windows that you see in the shuttle the overhead windows would come back the ejection seat on a rail would go straight out and they thought that that would project them past the flume mm -hmm. of the rockets and the three motors uh -huh. and the tail uh -huh. <laughs> you want to be yeah, the rudder was something to get yeah. over too. Yeah, they you got to be the, away from that. The, the, they thought they might get hit by the rudder. That would and it, it was supposed to happen. And you know about the hatch. You know when we land, the ha the crew module is floating separate in the bird. It's on bungees and and shock absorbers and stuff. And okay. what one of the big fears is if we ever had a hard landing and hit the ground hard that the hatch wouldn't be able to open because the crew module would shift and the hatch would be stuck. Mm. So they could also blow these overhead windows and they had these ropes up there called Sky Genie. Huh. And you'd attach rope on your carabiner and you could rappel down the side of the ship. I'll be dang. So, did you all practice that repelling down you the side can, of the ship? Yeah, and you mock can, up? I went ahead and did it. Just did you see. really? Yeah, because, you know, I... I wanted all of my guys to do everything. That's why we wore the suit. Right. Because I wanted them to get the full experience. So, yeah, we even uh, crashed the shuttle landing a couple times. <laughs> okay. In the simulator. So, when you're at Houston, you go try and find something else to do, you know, while you're there. The MBL, really cool neutral buoyancy lab. <laughs> Big pool. Well, we're enjoying a great conversation with Triple T. Uh, who was the lead of the astronaut closeout crew at the White Room at the same time that Mark Usiak over here was a freelance launch photographer at many of these missions. We have a comment, Jessica. Tom Usiak says, there's my little brother. I should have shaved. Eat your heart out, Tom. <laughs> the, though we did have a little bit of rain here the, the other day. It's still been yeah. nice and warm here. Yeah. And uh, we'll, have Tom, we'll have Mark back many times. We appreciate how they've embraced our museum, and they actually have a star on our Galaxy of Giving constellation, the Heart constellation. So, and we're going to start promoting that more next week uh, with our our uh, lineup of more guests that we're going to bring you, as well as space history and astronaut birthdays. Uh, wanted to get to our photographer Tom or, or uh, uh, Mark Usiak here. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about forty years ago about uh, uh, the the. The, the travails of a free, freelance photographer. Well, and we the have unknowns to, of photographing a rocket launch. Of well, magazine. NASA came out with a uh, suggested sheet for exposures for everything. So you weren't totally blind. I mean, I would die to see that. Uh, you have a copy of it? My right? brother may. He, okay. he may have saved it. I want to scan of that. <laughs> we've got boxes and boxes of silverfish food we used right, to call it because right. we bring silverfish food yeah <laughs> i love it we we scared a few, few yeah. silverfish away yes, this afternoon yes, through, we through that yes we did ebay stuff but uh i mean it was film versus digital so you know you've got 36 shots i mean you're not changing film ah. in the middle of shooting I mean, you've got to pace out your you shot count before you know things i mean you can see it weather permitting you could see the the vehicle for a good two or three minutes yeah. so you don't want to shoot 30 pictures in the first you know 30 seconds that makes sense but you know you wanted to be able to have some to kind of space it so you'd save some right nowadays digital oh god you're just... shooting 10 shots a second for 10 or 15 seconds at a clip and and it was just you know it was just a lot different back then it, you know, we, we knew the exposures that we wanted. We had shot STS-1, you know, before. Um, and we, we had set remote cameras out as well for those flights. And once we got STS-1 nailed down, 
and you could you could judge. I mean, it was basically a daylight exposure. Mm-hmm. The main thing was to keep the shutter speed high because that thing is moving. So you know, you'd lock it. You had 100 speed or 400 speed film. You'd lock your shutter speed at 500 or thousandths of a second. Adjust your aperture f8. Pray that it didn't cloud up, and mm-hmm. go go for there. rain. Or or right. Well, so, well, our equipment was pretty. We we had boxes built. Yes. That we could survive rainstorms. Tell us about the uh, automatic uh, mechanism that got those uh, remote shots. Those were. Uh, and is there a different mechanism triggers. today? Well, we kind of pride ourselves on having like the Soyuz of sound triggers. We perfected that stuff back in the eighties, and really never changed it through the entire length of the shuttle program. You said sound. Totally sound triggers. Yep, it, we the core of the system was built around a sixty dollar Radio Shack decibel meter. Huh. Can't even do that anymore. That You've got ran, on it. That ran ran off a nine volt battery. Steve Nolte, Bob Preston, Tom, and I. You know, Steve and and Bob were the electronic geniuses. They built all the electronic equipment for the triggers and the potentiometers and the relays. They built that in their house. We hooked up the Hasselblad to it. Tested it by making clapping or, or sound so we knew what the decibel range was, and it just worked. And we were fortunate enough, after the first flight, we had a little bit of a hiccup because we had the the sensitivity set to a different frequency because it was the first time we had set up remotes. We never did remotes during the Apollo days, but we did it for the shuttle. And once we got STS-2 on, you know, one under our belt, STS-2 came around, and we had those things nailed down, and uh, it was great. I mean, we we had, we basically used that same system um, for pretty much the entire length of the program. Can you look at a picture that you took and wish that you had the the equipment today? To I make, just wish know? I knew you back. Then. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was I think that was a big. I think, uh, I think what's cool here is I was on one side of the fence. You were yep. on another side. And, and yeah, we never seen each other. You know, and I, 40 years later, yeah. here we're, we're uh, your great friends, yeah. by the way. Mark, uh, I'll just leave it there, Marty. I don't want to be on there. Mark uh, photographed Triple T and his brother at yeah. the Smithsonian. It was awesome. Uh, when your uh, crew uh, thing was put in there. So mm-hmm. uh, that's how we got to know each other. That's what yeah. I love about this museum is people whose paths cross. Yeah. Uh, years later, and you were working on the same mission or, or yeah. things like that on there. Well, let's talk about, let's go to 2011, 2010 and 2011, when we flew the last three shuttles, each orbiter, uh, one last hurrah. <laughs> uh, uh, Triple T, you say many times that it was just a well-oiled machine at that yeah, time. It was. It was. I thought we were flying better, safer. I wish we'd kept going, but yeah. And it did its job. Mm-hmm. Built space station, put Hubble up, space mm-hmm. truck. Yeah, space truck in there. Yeah. Uh, but the, the the unknowns to the knowns, uh, thirty year time oh, that wow. you were out there, uh, like you, you you talk about making things with your dad in the yeah. shop and so forth. Yeah. As it went now, so it was none of that was going Not here. There was stuff still in boxes inside the payload bay mm-hmm. systems. Yeah. Whole systems, hydraulics, electrical. It was just a shell. Oh, and really? For two years, we rebuilt it. I was hired as a vehicle test mechanic, and I was supposed to test it. But we had to end up building it. So actually, on Columbia, there's brackets I built out of my toolbox. I would take it to the engineer, and he'd measure it and make a drawing of it and i'd go paint it and put numbers on it and it's flight hardware and i made it you know my dad used to laugh me i, I can't believe you're doing that jughead and i'm like yeah. it's, uh, it's like the duct tape stuff yeah it's very official very yeah so we just you know it was it was a lot of fun at sts1 sts2 comes along you know we didn't know everything but we had a pretty good idea what each person's job was you know so uh but I just love it that uh, here we are years later, and it, you know, I probably saw him out there putting yeah. cameras up. We probably you know? saw, you, walk, saw yeah. you walking around on the deck at night photography. Yeah, we'd be out, <laughs> we'd be out there and and getting sunset shots and doing really fun stuff. And, and you know, when the astronauts come to there on like Su seventeen, which is training mm-hmm. uh, for launch, 
it's a mock launch kind of and uh, the photographers take pictures at the slide bar basket area yep. and all that and i wondered if you guys were there i think carlton was more in that we uh, the earlier part of the program we basically just came down for the launch right yeah, um, yeah. carlton fortunately lives here and he's going to tell you lots of stories about local flavor in the, mm -hmm. in the coming yeah, week. we're going to have him, in, have him in, in december first but, week of december yeah he, he's he covered a lot of that stuff i mean cool. we we came in Sometimes we were here for crew arrival, yeah, which was like three days, I guess, out. Yeah, and then uh, we covered the walkouts, of course, and then launches. But tell uh, us what the walkouts are. Not everybody's familiar with the terminology. Well, <laughs> you want to do that, boss? You saw them before well, I did. <laughs> yeah, uh, when they walk out of the ONC building, operations and checkout, and they come out, they do a little wave before they get on the Astro van. Today, I guess they get in their Tesla. That's it. <clears throat> but uh, they wave before they got on the Astro van. It's a good video time. And people, actually, if you could ever hear some of the audio, people are wishing them well. Workers that worked in the ONC yep. building, and they're, you know, be careful, God, you know, all this kind of stuff. So it's a good time for the crew to see the public. And then once they get on the Astro van, it's launch day. Mm -hmm. So, the, interesting seeing that crew three uh, the umbrellas standing out yeah, there. Yeah, I've never seen that. Uh, you know, you're going out there and there. Uh, well, we're enjoying a conversation uh, with Mark Usiak, professional photographer. Of course, Triple T Thompson here. <laughs> I'm Mark Marquette, your host and of Stay Curious, and hope you enjoy this program. Marty Winkles doing the camera and the audio. We got Jessica Good Galloway job. doing a Bauman. And uh, we've been doing a lot of these things uh, lately. And we hope that you all share our program on Facebook Live, YouTube, and Twitch. Uh, uh, Bruce Jacobs, our information technologies guru, is putting them babies up on uh, YouTube just as fast as we spit them out. Or they look good the other day. Yeah. Uh, our YouTube channel rocks. There's not just our oral histories there. There's all kinds of neat uh, there's a video of all kinds of rockets blowing up. Everybody likes to see that kind of stuff. <laughs> and there's a ghost. And there's a what? There's a ghost. Oh, a ghost. There's oh, a yeah. Ghost. There's a, a, we have a ghost. Go see our ghost. We need how many hours of YouTube time? Oh, you're but not we... going to get it from the ghost video unless you uh, play it on repeat. Okay. But, uh, eight, yeah, there's a, a ghost lot. in our Cape Canaveral gallery that has uh, been the subject of uh, ghost hunters from cool. Europe. Even yeah. Down there. Take like 100,000 watch hours. I know. It's crazy. <laughs> Uh, but we are and forget it. <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, no, we're enjoying contrasting 30 years of the shuttle era because Mark photographed it, Travis lived it, and uh, 40 years ago, Columbia went to space for the second time a huge thing because that's what it was all about. Would the tiles hold yeah. together? Would everything work the way it was supposed to? Uh, that was a big deal tile. The big deal with the tiles, of course. Yeah. Mark, uh, we didn't talk too much about the difference in technology 30 years from the first shuttle to the Ooh. last. Wow. Film versus digital. What can you say? I mean, that was your main thing was numbers of frames. Nowadays, mm -hmm. digital, I mean, to shoot a launch on digital, most of the guys are going through four, five, six hundred frames at a launch. Mm -hmm. When you're shooting ten frames a second and you hold that button down for a couple seconds, you can gobble up the uh, the megabyte <laughs> and the frame <laughs> count. With film, like I said, if if we we were shooting a mix, uh, we had Hasselblads, which had a maximum capacity of twenty four shots. If you put a two twenty roll in, mm -hmm. or twelve shots for you know a one twenty roll, thirty five millimeter, you were limited to thirty six. So yeah. again, you had to time everything out. You know, you, your neatest, best shots, of course, were the climb out up until it was, you know, four or 500 feet up above the tower. But then you had to just pace it and pace it. And, and mm -hmm. maybe you got the SRVs coming off if the weather was good and the lighting was right. Maybe it didn't. If it went into clouds, then you didn't have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, there's all that stuff going through your mind while you're shooting it. So you almost had to count backwards I got 10 frames left. I got five frames left. Yeah. You know, that kind of stuff. And, uh, but, you know, it, it's, film is, is, you know, photography is the same. I mean, it's whether or not you're putting it on a chip or whether or not you're putting it on film, it's still light and it's shutter speed and it's yeah. aperture. So once you've got that nailed down, 
and, and it's weather, of course, it's weather dependent. But so. still, you can pull down that trigger and have mm -hmm. how many gigs mm -hmm. of pictures? Yeah. Versus, like a movie. Versus, yeah. <clears throat> well, one thing. Less uh, than 30 shots. Yep. Uh, maybe. Tell if, me about it. One, <laughs> one thing, being a photographer myself, of course, was like we were doing, getting our streak shots together for the launch last uh, yep. Wednesday night. Yep. And you could. Uh, you could take a practice shot without the streak in it to frame it by, by taking exposure and you see it on the back of your digital camera. And But when you were in the film days, you didn't know what you had until you went to the lab and like myself, <laughs> I photographed, I developed thousands of rolls of Tri-X film in a dark room yep. for the Associated Press. You didn't know what you got, but you could still screw that up, the processing, by by putting on the spool that you loaded the film uh, yeah. uh, 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 them on top of each yeah. other, and oh man, you could you could mess it up in the dark. I just wonder stuff. if anybody still has those little black tubes that the With film little, came little in. Little canister. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. They they could be used yeah. for all kinds of stuff. I think you can just buy empty ones. Yeah. Oh, you can't. They fit quarters. Oh yeah, yes. they fit. They That's fit right. all kinds Laundry of things, and they're money. watertight. Yep. And they're watertight too. There you go. Uh, so <laughs> definitely easier to photograph today. Uh, but I, I want to ask you this: How many times? And not just launch photography, mm -hmm. but like covering a public event. How many times was the shot you used the last or next to last frame? For me, it was a lot. It seemed like it yeah. seemed like an athlete. You just started to get warmed up in yeah. your zone yeah. and you're yeah. seeing the angle. And then and then you're like, click. Oh, I think I got it. Click. I got it. And then click. Uh oh, that's the last one. You know. <laughs> yeah, that, that's. I think that's all photographers have pretty much experienced that. Every and time. It's, it's just. Hard in yeah. there. As long as your battery's charged, I mean, you know, the frame counts. You're I mean, going to get talking a good picture. Thousands. I mean, it, 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 what it does is it frees your mind that you don't have to worry about counting back anymore. Right. And, yeah. And you don't have to worry about your exposure. And, and it allows you to get better composition, allows you to make sure things are, you know, the way you want them. So you don't have to do a whole lot of post processing. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the biggest advantage, I think. You got to worry about that backup battery being charged. Uh, that's why you and all you're watching on Facebook, <laughs> okay? You can see Mark Uciak, U S I A C K. It's printed right there yeah. uh, on Facebook. Uh, his his yeah. brother Tom I, I... also posted some pictures of STS2 today. Uh, and uh, uh, that's okay. You want to see Travis come down here and buy a ticket yeah, and on. have the best tour you'll ever have in your life of, of a space yeah, museum yeah. from a man that lived it there. So. We've, we've enjoyed talking, hearing these stories from you guys yeah. and hearing a couple of new things there. <clears throat> Mark, you had something that you wanted to give the museum and then had we another did. little thing to do there. Uh, that was uh, actually, actually, Marty, why don't we keep, why don't we hide me and put, them. put it into the, uh, the building? So what are we looking oh, at here? Oh, 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 oh. Well, this is one of the last times that Atlantis saw daylight. Um, this was taken... <laughs> I think I have it marked back there. It's November yeah. of uh, 2011. November 2nd, 2012. 2012. On its way. The, yep, it was on its way to the uh, Atlantis building at the Visitor Center. Sweet. And they had towed it all the way from the OPF. Yeah. Down State Road 3. You were probably... I was, yeah. And uh, and it went from there into the building where it is now living the building wasn't finished. They had basically had built three walls and left the back wall open, and they pulled that in and then closed the building. They built the building up around how long they, after it was how long in. take him to close the building up there. Oh, week, I, I don't know. I wasn't down there right, for that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that, was, that, that, was a, that was a construction Not really. project. Yeah, it you know? was. Hmm. All I remember is it, it rolled out of the OPF. I was there doing something, and I stayed there, and I watched it roll out. Okay. And then it was beer 30 then. Beer 30 yeah, at, at the uh, DI. Huh? I mean, yeah, they're taking my birds away. That's yeah. the last one I'm done. What uh, blows my mind is this we thing. Talk, we talked about that. That's that's triple T after hours. Yeah, yeah. that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I got a lot of those stories. <laughs> uh, triple T, talk about this. What I find interesting, this bird went 17,500 miles an hour awesome. for millions of miles, but there it is crawling yeah. like a turtle. As, uh, on, on the, and on the everybody's land there. Isn't eyes that a on paradox? It. Yeah, it was, and everybody's eyes were on it, uh -huh. probably more than a launch. Because oh, really? they were they were getting they were standing on the sides of the roads. They yeah. were all over. You, here's the space shuttle going by. Mm -hmm. You know, that's kind of cool. <laughs> well, uh, well, Mark, you have something else that you want to share uh, here, and that's we really do appreciate good. our Marie Louise G. West Endowment Fund for helping 
buy the equipment to bring these things here. This, sir. You've got a little something to say there, Triple T. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> this was, is for you. Oh, my God. My brother and I, oh. who were fortunate enough to be there. Oh, and Lord. cover that for you. We were... Uh, God bless people. people. Thank you. Oh, my God. <laughs> and uh, I'll see Pam. Turn it Elroy. towards us. Yeah. She's here um, for the space... Tomorrow hall for fame. the Hall of yeah. Fame. She's inducted in the Hall of Fame. Triple T is going to be there. Yeah, okay. I wish we could get her to come here. Well, I'll see you over That's there. up yeah, to you. I'll see you tomorrow. You. We I'm got like... keys. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> Bart, uh, Bart got me the ticket, our other docent. Right. Here, Bart. Well, I'll put this right here, Marty. Yeah, that is that way this cool. is the whole panorama. <laughs> Actually, we have this here in our museum over here that yeah. Pam Milroy personally That's gave That's way me. cool. So yeah. we wanted to give one to the museum. We're, we're to gonna we're gonna here. donate one to the museum and oh one for your personal collection. Uh, <laughs> I see the little, ta you know, the thing yeah. up there that she, she gave us. Yeah. yeah, and in fact, there it is. Yeah, there it is. I oh, look at that! It's it's uh, <laughs> it's on display here at the museum. If it's you like... don't get the complete story on July 9th, Travis's flight suit, which is over Marty, you can zoom in on it. Was, yeah, was put uh, officially inducted into the. Udvar Hazy Air and Space Museum of the Smithsonian, <laughs> where the Discovery <laughs> Orbiter is. And cool. uh, uh, this, uh, tell us a little bit about the astronaut involved that helped you do that. And uh, uh, we know it was a great day. NASA yeah. PR just ate this up. It oh, was yeah. such a happy story the Smithsonian was looking for. They had just literally opened up a couple of weeks before. Yeah. And uh, I love that picture of you looking at it. Uh, but uh, I know. Tell us the circumstances that that you're still today. Uh, you can go see that. Yeah, it's still there. It's on display. And uh, Alan Poindexter, whose birthday the other day we talked about. Yeah. Uh, we were there. Yeah. There was two hundred some astronauts there to walk the orbiter into. Two hundred astronauts yeah, were there. All of them. All yeah, of them. And you were there, Mark, photographing yep, that. All right? of them. Yep. And I got, and they let me walk in with them. And Alan Poindexter says, "Hey." You got your uniform? I said, yes, sir. He said, go get it. So I went and got it, and he introduced me to Valerie Neal and gave it to him, and now it's on display, and uh, I can't believe it. This thing here that I gave Pam years ago, uh, that's, the actual, that's the actual cap off of the crew module. That seals all the air in. So close that crew, close, you know, and I gave that to her when she was... Uh, uh, she was not leaving the astronaut office, but she was done flying. So I gave that to her. Huh. That's very cool. Well, well, <laughs> well, well <laughs> thank you're going to see you. her again. Both of you. Sweet. Right. Good, good. Well, uh, easy, I got fixed your name. Thank you. And Saturday's you Astronaut <laughs> Hall of Fame inductees are uh, Allegra Lopez. Right. And uh, Pam Melroy and uh, Scott Kelly. Scott. Uh, is Scott right? Yeah, not, yeah so it's not his brother Mark. Mark. Scott, who spent the most time in space through yeah. 11 months, they'll be inducted in there. Both of you guys are going to be there. Look for uh, Mark's pictures on his Facebook page, and I'll try to sh shove them over to our Facebook at the American Space Museum, and you'll be there. Uh, I can't wait. It's the first one I've ever been to. Oh, wow. So this, yeah, is, good. Cool. this is exciting for me. Okay. And Don't thank uh, uh, Bart Martindale. Yeah. Thank you, Bart, uh, for co-hosting. He Bart did and Marty did an interview with uh, General Fred Gregory. Yeah. The uh, uh, day before or yesterday, or was it yesterday? Yesterday, yesterday that we got the, our Trekkie Techies going to whip it up together. So we'll have it on a probably a Thursday when I have to go to a community liaison event mm -hmm. You'll be liaising. that's right i'll be liaising so but uh so just just uh, i'm 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 the kid in the candy store looking at these wonderful people uh that we consider here uh a national treasure both uh, triple t and marty winkle who worked on the grumman lunar module and yeah and the space shuttle and uh and mark uh Yusiak, uh, who has documented this so faithfully with your brother uh, not every time were you probably uh, uh, financially reimbursed what you probably put into it, <laughs> but uh, that's what that's why we love it, right? That's yeah. absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, any parting shots there about uh, uh, your week here at the Space well, Coast? Well, look, looking forward to seeing everybody tomorrow at the Atlantis Building. Um, it usually draws a nice big crowd, cool. and it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. You're gonna I'm looking it. forward to it. Yeah, I'm gonna go get a haircut. 
You're gonna go get, all right, go get a haircut, <laughs> fresh braid. Uh, that's why I had the hat on. That's it. Haircut day. I need a haircut. Well, thank you all for joining us again for another episode of Stay Curious. Uh, we again, I thank uh, Travis Thompson and uh, Mark Usiak, and we thank the Marie Louise West Found Endowment uh, for uh, uh, being able to do this. We're going to be do taking more things on the road. And though these aren't exactly oral histories per se, like the NASA does, there are conversations where you're learning things that you never heard before about the pins that they put in yeah. the ejection seats. I never heard that one before. Mm -hmm. So tell your friends to go relive this program on Facebook Live, on YouTube, or Twitch. And we need people to share and post and like yeah. and, and just uh, get the word out there. Because you're going to hear stories you never heard before in our Stay Curious program, and we're so right. proud of that. It's just not me, Marty, and Jessica. It's our whole team here at the American Space Museum that brings this to you. So, and Marty? They're going to hear some good stories from Fred Gregory, things that they've never heard before. Okay. He said Fred Gregory and him put, did some good stories He's together. He's a cool guy. And uh, I'm going to get you some graphics, Jessica, that you can probably throw in there yep. uh, with the stuff. Or, or she'll listen to it. She knows how to Google that stuff as easy as me on there. I want to say yesterday was Veterans Day. I didn't get to tell Marty how. Happy Veterans Day and all the veterans out there. Thank you for your service. We had John Weaver here who went in the Marines with Marty. Wow. A great cool. uh, that you can check that out again. Uh, thank you, Carlton, for being here and, and everybody else. So I guess until uh, <laughs> we pick up uh, Stay Curious where we left off, uh, what do we say, gang? Until uh, the next time, come oh, see us to bridge, bridge the, the space, space between, between us. us. Come see me. <laughs>